This is the largest area in the world where women are legally banned. And since I know the animators have just put up a picture of some kid's bedroom and it probably says Sam's room on it, and it probably has a kid in there with an arrow pointing towards him that says little baby boy Sam, and then there's another arrow pointing towards the empty bed that says absolutely no girls, I'm just going to say it one more time, this is the largest area in the world where women are legally banned. It's called Mount Athos, and it's a small peninsula jutting off from northeastern Greece. Like most Greek peninsulas, Mount Athos is technically part of Greece, but unlike those other peninsulas, it's governed autonomously with its own set of laws and regulations. To get into exactly why, we're going to have to do a little segment called Theological History that's been condensed down to like 20 seconds because the YouTube algorithm told me you guys don't like that stuff. So here we go. In Antonite tradition, the Virgin Mary was sailing around one day and got blown off course onto the shores of Mount Athos. Realizing that the mountain was super pretty, she called up her son, Jesus, and was like, hey, my son, Jesus, who is also God, this mountain is pretty sweet. Can I have it forever and ever? And Jesus was like, ugh, mom, sure, whatever. God, you're so embarrassing. And then it was so. Okay, segment over. I promise that'll be relevant in a minute. Now, because of its religious significance and role in Christian history, Mount Athos has been occupied and maintained by Eastern Orthodox monks since around 800 CE. During the days of the Byzantine Empire, it was established as an independent, self-governing state, what is now known as the Monastic Republic of Mount Athos. The Republic is composed of 20 different monasteries and can house around 2,000 Orthodox monks from around the world who come to Mount Athos by boat because there's no road connecting it to the rest of Greece to stay up late and party all night long as long as your idea of party is rehearsing solemn prayers at 3.30 a.m. This monastic republic, which stretches from the tip of the peninsula to around here, has a fairly unique legal status in the Constitution of Greece. If you'd flip open your own personal copy of the Constitution of Greece to Part 3, Section E, Chapter 3, Article 106, you'd find that the Greek government essentially gives the 20 monasteries in the Republic the power to autonomously govern the peninsula and set their own laws under the guidance of an appointed governor. And if you actually looked through the Constitution of Greece like I told you to, you'd know it was Article 105, not Article 106, because you can't trust strangers on the internet to give you straight facts on the Constitution of Greece. Anyways, with this autonomy, the monastic Republic of Mount Athos does what Alabama's been trying to do for centuries and treats the entire 129 square mile or 335 square kilometer territory as one enormous thousand year old monastery. This means, for example, that they're still on Byzantine systems of timekeeping, where their calendar is 13 days behind our Gregorian calendar, and days officially begin when the sun sets instead of midnight. What this also means is that the entire peninsula follows the law of Avaton, which is basically just the Orthodox Church's fancy way of saying, no girls allowed. This is rooted in long-standing rules against women entering men's monasteries, but also, specifically, the theological history of the peninsula. Mary claimed it as her own, and we all know the classic rule, there can only be one woman per sovereign territory. This law actually extends beyond just human women, too. Female animals are also legally banned from Mount Athos, which means that eggs and dairy products need to be imported from elsewhere in Greece. Now, even though Greece is committed to keeping the territory free of cooties, the question of legality becomes a little more complicated when you consider that Mount Athos is, like Greece, part of the European Union. While the EU would generally prohibit a law that basically boils down to women are banned from an entire region of Europe because they might distract the old men who live there from reading their scrolls, Greece's accession agreement to the EU specifically includes a declaration that guarantees the sovereignty of Mount Athos. And when Greece joined the Schengen Agreement in 1992, which basically allowed other Europeans to travel freely throughout their country, they had to make yet another exception for the monks' private party peninsula. That hasn't stopped Europe from wagging their finger disapprovingly, though. In 2001, the European Parliament called for Mount Athos to lift their ban on women, and Mount Athos said, nah, we're good. And that was basically the end of that. Theoretically, the law could be overturned in the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg, so if you're a woman who's really looking to hang out with some monks that definitely do not want to talk to you, that's gonna have to be the first stop on your trip. Of course, if you're planning on arguing in front of the European Court of Human Rights for your right to violate the ancient law of Avaton, or if you just have something else you've been meaning to do, you're probably going to need to free up some of your time. Fortunately for you, our sponsor, Morning Brew, can help you do that absolutely for free. Morning Brew is a daily newsletter that gets you up to speed on the latest in business, finance, and tech in just five minutes by crunching down the day's news into witty, informative, bite-sized pieces. And it's free. Did I mention that it's free? It, it's literally free. Instead of starting my day by mindlessly scrolling through Twitter and Reddit, I use Morning Brew to quickly catch up on what's important, like Iceland's new four-day workweek or Amazon's new CEO. It's a great way to stay better informed on world events and to save precious time while you're at it, but best of all, it's free. I wanted to save that best part for last. 
There's literally no risk to trying it out, and it takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe. So sign up to start receiving Morning Brew for free by using the link in the description.